Space. Apollo 11. Thoughts after watching the new documentary. What's up, space people? Just checking in. I want to talk about my thoughts after watching the Apollo 11 documentary that just came out. Thank you, Joe, for reaching out and recommending it to me. I had it on my list, but you sold it so well. (laughs) I watched it that night. It's available on iTunes, or at least that's where I got it. Uh, They compiled a ton of unseen footage of the astronauts, mission control, and and the crowds outside on launch day. They remastered the footage amazingly as well, and if you're a fan of space, it's so worth it. You're you're on a trip from the start of the movie through the launch of Apollo 11, their trip to the moon's surface, and back home to Earth. The music, which was very minimal, added to the whole drama of the event itself, and the documentary tells the story of Apollo 11 in a way that I felt like I understood a little more about what the event must have been like for the people that lived during those times. They captured an energy and a feeling, and it was kind of like an HBO documentary, which, by which I mean, it was really intense and awesome. Now, a day after watching it, I'm recording this ahead of time. I want to give people a few days to watch it. I'm still stuck on just how stressful and dangerous landing the lunar module on the moon's surface looked. And the launch from the surface to mate to the, with the command module was just as crazy. What a trip that must have been to actually feel the difference of flying at low G in the vacuum of space and needing to adjust if it's not what you expected from the simulations. I, I have the same feeling when I watch Paul 13 and they have to fly and they have to fly blind using the Earth as a reference point to fire the engines to enter the proper orbit. That whole scene is intense, and after I learned about the actual science behind the scene, my stomach turns. You you have to be a really great pilot to pull that off, and they did pull it off, but man, was I, was I nervous watching that. Then there's the idea of the three human crew. Two go down to the surface, and one stays in orbit by themselves, and... There was, I think, a five-hour window when Michael Collins and the command module was on the dark side of the moon without contact from Buzz, Neil, or NASA. Nobody. Absolutely silent. And literally by yourself for five hours. I think I could do a few days where I'd have to do a five-hour shift, but any more than that, I don't know, especially not in their conditions. There's not a lot of room. It's not like the International Space Station, which is still no luxurious or roomy stay, The discipline to prepare for a mission like Apollo 11 is mind-boggling to me. But at the same time, it doesn't surprise me that hard work pays off. I do feel a surge of excitement about our future return to the moon. I think that the next five years are going to be filled with advances in human spaceflight and the continuation of Launch America and the first woman and next man to step on the surface of the moon. Even if NASA doesn't do it, SpaceX or Blue Origin will do it. The next space race is here, folks. And this documentary has got me fired up about the possibilities. The success of Apollo 11 changed culture and humanity, and I believe altered the course of this universe for mankind. It's not a far reach since we were in the middle of the Cold War and the space race with the Soviet Union. In that alternate universe where Apollo 11 did not succeed, could very well have altered the future as we know it. What I'm trying to say is make sure to check out the Apollo 11 movie. There's a link on todayinspace.net for this episode for uh, for iTunes that you can find it there. I'm just super excited about space and this documentary rocked. I did a whole episode on how I feel about it the day after, clearly, so it's great. Go watch it and let me know how you liked it and what it makes you think about the next five years in human spaceflight. Thank you for joining us for Today in Space, the all things space science podcast. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube and on Apple Podcasts. Don't forget your free audiobook with Audible on us by going to audibletrial.com slash todayinspace. Don't sit in traffic bored. Diversify your listening queue. 
add an audio book and switch when the music or podcast don't cut it. Hey, I get it. You got to do what you got to do. Switch it up and throw on your free audible audiobook by going to audibletrial.com slash today in space. It's a lot of audibles. I just picked up Blink by Malcolm Gladwell. It's really good. I only listen to about 15 minutes at a time because it's a little too dense for me, but it makes a perfect switch up when podcast or music isn't cutting it. And when I'm only halfway to work in the mornings because I've already spent 40 minutes and apparently I've got 40 more minutes to go. So go to audibletrial.com slash today in space to save yourself from that. And I want to remind everyone, especially anyone new to the podcast, that in addition to Today in Space, I also run AG3D Printing, where I use 3D printing to bring people's ideas into reality with 3D printing. You can get a free quote on your 3D printing project today. Head over to ag3d-printing.com to do that. Another goal of AG3D is to show you how to 3D print at home. We have a projects blog and a YouTube channel. I've been on a roll lately with new content. There was a lot of Game of Thrones stuff recently, some time lapses of 3D prints and making 3D printers and fixing 3D printers. And uh, we were even making a functional 3D printed version of John Long Claw Sword, which has now kind of become a whole new project, which is fun. You can check that out. And if you stay up to date with us long enough, you're going to learn about 3D printing and eventually you're going to do it for, uh, by yourself. That's where this is all moving to. It's how I see the future. Expansive 3D printing happening. Eventually, you're not going to need me and you're going to want to learn how to do it yourself. So that's, that's our ultimate goal is make sure people 3D print at home. If you get 3D prints from us, it helps fund the podcast. It helps us keep doing what we're doing here. So it's all good. It's all love. So make sure to follow up on Instagram at AG3D Printing and on YouTube as well. Thank you to everyone who's been hitting me up about my new content. Really appreciate the support. Trying some new stuff, learning some new skills, and digging this new approach of documenting instead of creating. Big shout out to Gary V for that. Thank you. That's all I got for today. Thanks for staying with us. Make sure to spread love and spread science. Until next time, be good and make sure to take a moment on a clear night to look up and enjoy the stars. It's worth it. <laughs>